Hey guys, welcome to the Killian Family Homestead. Happy Saturday. It's middle of November and uh, we have dramatically lowered the fish count. We've planted a few things with seeds directly into this uh, constant flow line right here. I've got a couple of ideas I want to share with you and see what you think. I also had just made a, a small adaptation today and I'd like to show you that as well. So first of all, the question of how many fish do we have left? I made this little diagram. Oh, I put the wrong date. It's, it's not October 12th, it's November 12th. Anyways, here we go. We have a total of 75 fish left. We have just a few fish in these barrels. We have 32 fish over here and I have zero fish over there. The reason why I have zero fish in this tank right here is because I, I drained I drained it completely or I displaced it, put it over into this bear, into this tote. Then I did some work on the valve down at the bottom, making sure that it was propped open constantly. Um, this these pipe this piping right here it looks like a tangled web, which it is. I had to do some work with it after after I placed them and what have you. So that's why it looks this way. But but this one kept closing on me for some reason due to suction. So I propped it open with a with a, a metal hook, so to speak. And now they're connected at all times to maintain the same level between the two totes. The reason why there's zero is I just did that work today, and I haven't pushed, I haven't put the fish back into that one. Why do I at least make sure there's some fish in every single fish tank? With the movement of the fish, it kicks up the dirt and, and debris on the bottom, which then gets sucked up the solids lifting outlet and gets pushed down and through the through the filter, back through the moving bed vial filter, pushed up through the media bed media tanks back in. So that's the cycle that we've got going on right now. Okay, let me show you what I did. It's at the opposite end of the system. In addition to the servicing of that large tote, I put this in. I needed to make sure that there was a method by which I could drain this media tank. And so actually the drain, I haven't finished it all the way, but once I rig up a system that it will, um, a valve or something that I can open and close, it will flush out the normal way, or out the normal uh, main drain pipe. Okay, this right here is meant so I can back up the lawn tractor or four-wheeler, fill up some sort of a tank, and then drive around the yard in the spring and summer, and feed nutrient-rich water to all of the the lawn plants and things that I have in the landscaping. So that's going to be kind of cool. That's a new little feature. Everything seems to be doing well. I've planted some coriander, some broccoli, some cauliflower, some cooler plants. The mint and things are still doing okay. You know, they're, they're very old plants now, so you've got some of the early growth that's dying off. Um, yeah. The problem with too few fish is that they, they don't What's the word? They don't spur each other on. When you put, when the food hits the surface of the water, oftentimes they go into a feeding frenzy and that helps everyone get aggressive about eating. When you have too few fish and the water's cooling off a bit because it's winter time, um, yeah, they don't eat as much. Water clarity is looking okay. Got some big ones still. For the sake of teaching, let me mention also that one issue that you have when you lower the fish count per barrel is that the dominant one can be somewhat, they're always, you know, territorial, but when the dominant one can be more directive on singular fish, that singular fish feels like it needs to jump out. And so I've had the system going for two years effectively, and I've had very little numbers of fish jumping out and dying. But recently, because the fish the fish count went so low now, that's 75 for the whole system, The uh, I'm having some fish jumping out and that's not too good. Just want to give you a sneak peek. There's some big ones in there, that's for sure. Yeah, I don't like seeing wasted food. That's such a bummer. Here's the breeder tank, they're growing up. 
if you've seen the previous videos I've shown you, so they're getting big. Haven't yet had any luck in them uh, getting a mouthful of eggs or babies, but we'll see. I, I'm patient. No worries. What else could I describe? Yeah, it, the plan is get the to get, try to get the plant count back up. Need to do a better job in that. And get the fish load down. And get through the winter. Yeah, I think that's it. I will give you a snapshot of these guys. No, I won't. I don't think you can see anything. The camera is not liking the, the glare of the light. Maybe if I came on this side, you'd be able to see it better. <laughs> nope. Okay. These right here, coral, I put it on the top here to both, you know, be one more piece of media to, to keep the solids from flowing back into this tank. But it's principally there to make sure we maintain the proper pH levels. Also, I put in a, a decent amount of solar salt, organic solar salt, in the system just to help with the um, fish health. My, my daughter put a bean seed right there and it sprouted. I mean, it was very quick. I, don't, I can't, I, I wish I could tell you how old this plant is, but here it is, November 12th, and we've got a bean plant growing. And I just love it. I'm getting better and better with the plants, or more, more, more motivated to do a good job with it. So we'll see how that happens over the winter time. Thanks so much. Appreciate you guys watching. Take care.